Christmas may be over, but the season of giving doesn't have to end. And one nonprofit group is hoping to raise funds for a special project at Monroe County's nursing home. News 13's Nicole Walters reports. So here it is, all 600 plus pages of the county budget, and it took a lot of time, effort, and thinking to put this mammoth together. News 13's Dan Snyder was in the courtroom and joins us now with more. Dan. Yeah, Marie, very emotionally charged day as for the first time Angela's family got to say their piece in front of the judge. And as it stands, today may be the last day Anthony Heath spends outside of prison walls. Carbon County's got a new sheriff in town, that man, Tony Harvilla. Tony, official results in. You're the new sheriff. How you feeling? Governor Tom Wolf's partial budget veto made waves yesterday. One cut in his line item veto was tourism funding. News 13's Dan Snyder is on Route 209 in Lehighton with more. Dan? Yeah, guys, and with a beautiful day like we had today, who would be thinking about ice on the roadways? But it's that thought process officials say lulls drivers into that false sense of security, potentially leading to crashes. Carbon County commissioners are moving forward with plans for an emergency training complex. Commissioners announced an agreement with architect Stephen J. Elton of Bethlehem. It's the next step forward for the planned fire training facility near the current 911 communication center in Nesquahoning. So while I may not have a future in the luge, there's still a great time to be had here at Winterfest. For more events coming up at Blue Mountain, check out the website at SkiBlueMT.com. Drivers who use the Pennsylvania Turnpike are reminded tolls go up this weekend. Thanks, George. You know, last time we were out here, uh, the party was inside. Well, yeah. the votes are in and the party's outside. They have something to celebrate. Uh, current sitting Commissioner Bill O'Gorick now joins us. And uh, Bill, you're going to have an opportunity in the fall to run for your fourth term. How do you feel? Many residents in Carbon and Lehigh counties were on edge this weekend, with some ready to leave their homes at a moment's notice. This after a massive weekend brush fire scorched hundreds of acres across the Blue Mountain. News 13's Dan Snyder was on scene yesterday. He joins us now live with the details. Dan. Yeah, guys, and, and really organized chaos might be the best way to describe this weekend's wildfire. And after battling flames for nearly two straight days, Today's rain is certainly a sight for some very sore eyes. We got a call for a fire East Penn Township along the old railroad bed, um, which is basically a worst case scenario for Carbon County. Nearly two dozen fire crews from across Carbon County rushed to the Blue Mountain on Saturday afternoon after a fire was sparked in one of the most dangerous spots in the area. It's all green briar, um, some uh, white pine, pitch pine, very volatile fuels. Um, very dry since the weather's been very dry. And it didn't take long for the fire to climb its way up the mountain. It's too fast and too dangerous to put people ahead of it. So what we have to do is just kind of pinch it and come around it. And just we very much depend on aircraft. By Saturday night, wind had driven the fire to the crest of the mountain and into Lehigh County. We have Northampton County's uh, command unit. We have forestry up here. We had uh, EMS crews, um, North Penn Goodwill, and 10 departments. Leah County, Northampton County. Officials reduced the crews overnight due to the treacherous terrain and relied almost solely on air support. By Sunday morning, the fire had scorched hundreds of acres. We estimate 300 acres at this point and still burning. But into Sunday, the winds had changed again, helping out crews on the Lehigh County side. Yesterday, we had a lot more smoke condition. Today, it's not as bad. We don't have the big winds like we had yesterday. Most of it is on Carbon County side. But even Carbon side believed they had the situation under control and had come up with a plan to finish the fire off. The game plan is to, uh, we call it, put it in a box. Crews would close in on the fire from four sides until they had it contained. But yet again, the wind changed. Different wind shifts, the fire started uh, heading north uh, across uh, Sports Club Road. That put houses along Route 895 in East Penn Township directly in the path of the fire. We got a lot of personnel down the area just to protect the houses and, and kind of stop the fire so it wouldn't keep spreading, you know, uh, east and west, you know, to put more houses in danger. Although no homes were evacuated, 895 was closed for a time. Crews continued to battle the blaze until finally luck was on their side. The rain's going to have to put this out totally, yeah. So I hope for rain Sunday today. <laughs> Last night's rain eventually did help put the fire out. And according to many officials, this weekend's fire will go down in history. As far as the worst fire in my lifetime, being the uh, fire chief of East Penn Fire Company, this was definitely the, uh, the worst uh, brush fire I've been on.
tally is in, but officials estimate up to 400 acres burned throughout the weekend. However, no homes were lost and most importantly, no lives were lost. Forestry officials have an idea of how the fire started, but are not releasing that information as they continue their investigation. Dan Snyder, News 13. 2015. You mean we're in the future? The future is now, at least in the eyes of Back to the Future fans who watched Marty McFly travel forward in time to this date. But the world he saw in the movie is a little different than what we're living now. It's really interesting, actually, because they have some things that they got really right um, that we do have today. There are interesting things that they kind of got a little off. We don't have self-adjusting clothing, uh, the Mr. Fusion car engine. We still have to use gasoline, unfortunately. There's also times where our reality has passed the movie. The fax machine and a phone booth. I've actually never used either of those technologies, but they were still very prevalent in 2015. But there's some things the movie nailed, like video phone calling, which didn't turn out so well for future Marty. Unfortunately, he got fired by his boss, if I can remember the scene correctly. It was still very interesting because it is something that uh, they thought was very futuristic, and it's almost commonplace today. Gruff says speech control capabilities and 3D technology are also getting close to the film's depiction. But one fan favorite could be here soon. The hoverboard, which is a very infamous scene. Lexus has actually come out with something called the slide that does, it comes pretty close. Cars are also a big part of Back to the Future's 2015. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Actually, Doc, in 2015, we do need roads. Unfortunately, we, uh, our cars don't fly quite yet. But the auto industry has made some major leaps since Marty's days in 1985. The amount of technology that's in them now, I don't think even when they made Back to the Future, they could have predicted some of the things the cars are doing now. Drivers can now unlock and start their vehicles from their phones. And while flying cars may still be a ways off, self-driving ones could be right around the corner. Cars have what's called adaptive cruise control already. If the car in front of you is doing 35 miles an hour, you're going to do 35 miles an hour. If the car speeds up to 50 and you set it that way, the car can accelerate. They slow down, the car will slow down. And of course, there's the big question of what Doc Brown packed in his own car, a time machine. Theorists are saying you wouldn't be able to travel back in time previous to the invention of the time machine, which also does throw the entire plot of the movie off. I don't think we're quite there yet. Now we start our team coverage with News 13's Dan Snyder, who's live in our Monroe County newsroom with more. Dan? That's right, George. Eric Freen's capture brought joy to many in northeastern PA, but also surprise to those living near the air park. It's done, you know, but yeah, it definitely would have, it could have been something else, you know, right around the corner. I pass by there on my bike all the time, so. We didn't see any police going by or anything, so we were really just shocked that he was there. Right now I had the mother attack, I call it, of what ifs could have happened. My kids play in the fields over there, and my kid was just there two weeks ago, so it's kind of scary. Finding out that he was near the house and just having him close by, knowing that he was in the area with kids in the neighborhood, and especially trick-or-treating close, everybody's, you know, wanting to have their kids out, um, so it was just kind of scary. Despite the shock, everyone we talked to is just relieved to have Freen in custody. A uh, relief. Um, I did not know he was in my backyard. I thought he was over in Barrett Township. My children are always running around. I got lots of children here, grandchildren. Um, they were going trick-or-treating in my neighborhood tomorrow night. Well, it's a relief to know that he's caught. Um, it's a surprise that he's been here because we thought he was looking in different areas. Um, so it's a little shock when they came with the bulletin that said he was caught at Birchwood. Yeah, it's a big relief to uh, to have this over with. Um, I didn't know it would be so close to the backyard, you know, kind of dances to here. But you figured he had a lot of time to, to move around. I'm glad that they caught him and, you know, we don't have to worry about it anymore. And so that's a relief. It's, I'm sure it's a relief to everybody in the neighborhood. There's still a large police presence outside of Birchwood Road where Freen was caught, but people in northeastern PA can rest a little easier tonight knowing police got their man. For News 13, I'm Dan Snyder. I have a bad feeling about this. A short time ago in a log cabin not so far away, a man had an idea. An idea to incorporate his family into one of his favorite movies. My whole childhood was Star Wars, Christmas, birthdays. That's all I wanted for presents, and they love it, and... So it was nice. Yeah, it's great to have them acting in, in my movies. Bill May decided that with the help of his nine-year-old daughter Hannah and 21-month-old daughter Miriam, he would enter the Star Wars fan film contest. But how would they separate themselves from a field of thousands? thought like a sitcom kind of idea would... 
I don't remember seeing that before, so I thought maybe that would be kind of unique. Wait, Star Wars the sitcom? Growing up in the 80s, Star Wars and sitcoms were two of Bill's passions, and it didn't hurt that the star of the show was all for it. I'm happy that it was like sort of cheesy and funny because like I think that when like something's like cheesy, I think of it as hilarious. So the maze got to work, and less than 12 parsecs later, bad feeling was finished. But for Hannah, the role may just be the first in a long career. I've always like wanted to be an actress. I, that probably won't happen, but like I like being stars of things and stuff like that. So it was really fun for me. Then they got the call. Bad Feeling was selected by Disney as a finalist in the fan film competition, where their movie would be judged by thousands of Star Wars fanatics across the globe. I hadn't seen anything like ours before, so I thought maybe we had a good chance. And I thought with our daughters uh, and their stellar performances that <laughs> we'd stand an even better chance. And even though they have a 1 in 24 chance of winning, Bill says never tell him the odds. We don't know how many people are watching. From what I've seen and from what I've uh, talked to my friends and stuff, it's very good feedback. Even if we don't win, just that thousands of people are seeing our video is, is reward enough for us. You can vote on your favorite Star Wars fan film until the end of the month. However, I do believe this is the fan film you're looking for.